Happy hump day, everybody. It's, well, Wednesday for you guys, it's Monday for me. Today, we're actually gonna talk about buying a new meter, uh, an affordable one, actually, not some crazy high price snap-on job, and how to diagnose charging systems. It's a pretty common question that today we're gonna talk about. I'll teach you guys some stuff about it. But it's, it's Monday. And there's two things that really start my week off right. One is riding a motorcycle to work. Number two is coffee. This coffee comes from a viewer named Ian. He said this stuff is like Dunkin' Donuts of Canada. Except Dunkin' Donuts is in America. Anyway, he also sent Harley and the Davidsons, which is pretty cool. Thanks, Ian. Now, let's talk meters. I'll, I'll go get it. So on the last tool deal, I told you guys about some really expensive snap-on tools. My favorites. But today I have a cheap $27 meter off of Amazon, which is pretty cool. It's something that's actually affordable and it's actually better than my really expensive blue point one. What comes in the package is, well, the meter leads. It actually comes with batteries separate, of course. You just two Phillips head screws right here and here and pop the batteries in, you're good to go. And then it comes with one of these things. It's a multi-function socket. Um, I, I'm supposed to know what that thing's for. I don't remember. It's like school stuff that I haven't actually used in a long time. Old blue point meter, like 250 bucks. I do have different leads, really long ones, cool magnetic disconnects. So you can like, if you have a ground, you can, y'all yeah, be transferring those to my new meter for sure. So what's the main difference between these? Well, this one has some fuses in it, a 500 milliamp hour maximum for a milliamp draw test and a 10 amp fuse for, coffee just went off, that's awesome and a 10 amp fuse for regular amp test. This milliamp is resettable. But what does that even mean? We should discuss. But it seems like I've also forgotten to do something today. For those of you that don't know me, my name is John Max, and I'm a highly trained unprofessional right here at Chattahoochee Harley-Davidson. And on this channel, I bring you guys to work with me. So if you want to learn more about Harley-Davidson, you should hit the subscribe button right now. Now that I caught up with everything I'm supposed to do, we can talk about different tests for this meter. I'll show you how the meter works, and we'll run through like a charging system test, because it's a common one I see all the time. People are confused about why their bike might not start or whatever. So yeah, let's go get a bike. So customer states new battery at another dealer four or five days ago, but it's still cut off later down the road. So customer states not charging. Now, if you watched last week's video, you know that step one is checking the terminals, checking the battery voltage and checking codes. So let's do that stuff. Definitely tight. Let's use that fancy new meter to check voltage. That's DC volts right there. I already put my new meter leads on there. Or my old meter leads rather. Battery reads 12.5 with the key off and 12.2 with the key on, which is pretty standard. Add the battery terminals, it is charging. That's DC volts is what charges the battery up. That's supposed to charge at 14.1 to 14.3. But how do I know that? From the electric diagnostics manual, that's how. Different than the service manual, but it's still pretty much the same thing. The electrical manual has the specs, how to check stuff, where connectors are located, all sorts of good stuff. If you're confident in diagnosing electrical stuff, it's worth owning one of those in addition to a service manual.
quick check of the speedometer, show some codes. The shop computer, it gives me more information than just what's found on the speedometer. So I'm gonna hook it up and check it out and I'll let you guys know what I'm seeing. Obviously you can't have this stuff at home and the whole point of the video is how to use my new meter or if you wanna get the new meter then you know how to use it. Real quick though, there's two types of like charging issues. If it's sitting, if the bike has been parked and it won't start like the next day, some like super close amount of time, or if you're riding down the road and it's not charging then. Out of the components that we'll talk about later, this different stuff going on. I know that he does have a PO562 code, which is low battery voltage at the ECM. I can freeze frame what's happening when that code gets thrown. I know his engine speed is 2800 RPM. Engine temperature is 100 degrees, so he's been riding for you know a little bit, but not real long. Battery voltage is 11.2 volts at that time. So that lets me know what to check. The charging system isn't a hard system to check anyway. It's just perfectly easy to check all of it, find out what's going on. So let's get right to it. I'm gonna ohm out the stator. That's my setting. Check it real quick. I got another camera angle so you can check it out. On this model, I actually have only two plugs right here. I'll show you a shot of some three plug jobs too. It's called a three phase versus a full phase stator. It's always good to have a base of what your leads resistance is ahead of time. 0.5 is pretty high. That's why it's good that I know what it is right now. It means 0.1 to 0.2 on my actual resistance through the stator is good. While I'm set up on these plugs, I'm gonna to switch to volts AC and check the what kind of voltage the stator is actually putting out right now. Pretty sure my other camera was bouncing all over the lift, but I get upwards of 70 volts AC, so I know the stator's putting out juice. The stator and rotor are working together to put out the juice it needs. Um, I do need to check and make sure it's not grounded out though. Back to ohms. Normally I do all the ohm tests together, but you know, like concentrating on video is in addition to troubleshooting this, so whatever. So what I'm doing there is checking to make sure that the stator isn't grounded out because I want the stator to work independently. If it's something's broken and it's touching the engine case, then all the voltage it puts out, it's just sending it straight to ground. It's not sending it to the battery like it needs it. This one is working fine. All right, my last test for this bike is pretty much for show. I already know that I have an intermittent charging issue while it's riding down the road. I know the stator is good, so realistically that leaves the regulator. You can't really check the regulator what you can do is check everything else leaving only the regulator to be the problem but the reason why this meter is so awesome is because of milliamp test i also like the fact that it's super dumbed down and telling me that i need to move my meter lead over you do a milliamp test if the bike is if the battery's dying while the bike is sitting i'm going to unplug the maxi fuse and very carefully put these in there. The meter shoots at 24 milliamps. I sit here and wait without damaging the pins inside this connector. And wait for it to drop down. Once the system de-energizes, I'll be good to go. We're gonna sit here and wait for a second. Make sure it doesn't shoot back up for any reason. I'm good with that. I should add too, I had to swap back to my old, or the meter leads that came with this meter. The other ones didn't sit like totally flush in there. And I think it was causing some, some issues getting some readings on this test. So too bad I spent like way too much money on those from Maco. So now I just gotta make sure the customer approves the new regulator. And yeah, there's more. Just stick around for a second. Spoiler alert, it's the next day. 
And I actually already ate my lunch. Unfortunately, the voltage regulator wasn't even in stock. So I gotta wait, which is unfortunate because that was gonna be like the end of the video, but that's okay because it's the next day. So I've already like watched some of that video and there's some things missing. Well, basically this is how it works. You got a stator. Now this is a different one than what's actually in the Sportster. This is a three phase that I mentioned earlier. Rotor, this stays on the crankcase bolted in. The rotor attached to the flywheel with those cool little teeth right there. Can you see them? And it rotates with the flywheel making electricity. AC voltage as a matter of fact. It goes into the stator input of the regulator. It does, sometimes you'll hear them called regulator rectifiers. That's because it regulates the voltage between 14.1 and 14.3 and converts it to DC. Puts it out on the two, two plug side on this particular one. Different than the sports to remember. It's not the same. <coughs> I already launched them. Sorry about that. What I'm getting at, why I explained that part is an intermittent charging issue. This, remember we tested if it was grounded, so like the windings are messed up, they're either shorted together or they're messed up touching like the casing around it and making it where all that voltage goes to the crankcase. That is either happening or it's not. It's not like sometimes shorted together and sometimes not. That's just not really how it goes in my experience anyway. The voltage regulator, however, it can get hot and suddenly not want to do what it's supposed to do anymore. That's usually what I see. It's usually heat induced. My point is though, intermittent charging problems, usually from this guy right here. I had to bring that up though, because everything I tested on that bike seemed good, but I had the PO562 code. So I knew that it's a problem. Not only do I have that code, because technically the code could be thrown if the bike just hadn't started for a long time and you keyed on, it would be like, no, I don't have enough voltage. Remember the freeze frame? I can freeze frame what's happening when that code gets thrown. I know his engine speed is 2,800 RPM. That whole like engine RPM, it's obviously riding down the road when this happened. That's key. That's part of like understanding what you're doing. That's why I wanted to do like this, this little how it works job. Magnets in motion create electricity that then get rectified into DC voltage, that's why we check that at the back. Yeah, so hopefully all that kind of makes sense. I also wanted to talk about too though, because I had a Sportster to work on, so I used the Sportster. A lot of you guys really like Sportster videos, but even more of you don't even own a Sportster. You own a Big Twin, which has the three pins. So we'll just like freeze frame this real quick and label these pins, one, two, and three. So when you're doing your checks, you would actually do your meter leads at one and two, one and three, or two and three, and you would do your own test that way, your AC voltage test, all the stuff that we did on the Sportster that you only have to, you know, you just move the meters around, make sure each leg is doing what it's supposed to do, and make sure that each leg is not shorted to ground. The best way to know how to do all that though is to have an electronic, electro, a manual that has electronic information in it, like this one. A lot of why I wanted to make this video though was, well, one, to showcase a tool since you guys ask me about tools a lot, and two, because I see that it's probably the most commonly asked question on Facebook is like why my bike won't start or why is my battery dead? Which I'll never understand why people ask Facebook these kind of questions anyway, like there's Google and YouTube and well, I don't know, like, dealerships that do this stuff. Anyway, people always ask Facebook and the response is overwhelmingly stator. Well, this stator needs magnets in motion to do anything. If your bike's just sitting, the stator isn't gonna fail and draw your battery down. It's not what it does. The milliamp draw test though would isolate any concerns that you might have. If you do have excessive milliamp draw, specs can be found in this book, then you uh, unplug components until that draw is within spec. The problem part is then, well, found because you unplugged it. Find like one of those USB DC, like cigarette lighter USB plugs. I found a few of those to be drawing down excessive amounts of battery, which is, I don't know, man, but that's just how you do it. Now you know. I'm pretty sure that's it. If not, throw some questions in the comments. I'll do my best to get back to you. And, uh, now, if you like this video, give it a big dirty thumbs up. If you want to see more content like this, make sure to hit the subscribe button. Smash the...
That's like some other guy's channel. Tap the bell notification so you know when I upload. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.